should know that people, most people who wear skirts live three years longer <laughs> than people who don't live skirt. Now, now truly, the statistic includes women, okay? But this is huge, guys. Lifespan that is three years uh, longer. You know, in my, in my uh, community, when they ask, you know, why husbands die before their wives, the answer is because they want to, okay? <laughs> But that's another TED Talk. Thank you so much. <laughs> But I'm here not to talk about science fiction. In fact, just to update you about science now. And, you know... You can look, and I've looked uh, throughout this day. By the way, people have aged earlier, <laughs> I see, and left. But I looked throughout the day at this auditorium, and I was asking, and I'm a physician, I was asking, who here has hypertension? Who here has diabetes? Who here has high cholesterol? And I, I wouldn't be doing a good guess. But if I ask who's here over the age of 50 or who's below age of 50, you, all of us, will do a pretty good job. And the point is that aging has a biology. And this biology can be targeted. We can delay aging. We can stop aging. We can reverse aging in several instances. And this is what I want to talk with you about today. And also to make sure that you understand that there are benefits from that. But before the benefits, let me make several points. The first is that aging is the risk factor for most of those diseases that we are afraid of, from cancer, from heart, from Alzheimer, from diabetes. Now, you'll tell me, no, just a minute, cholesterol is the biggest uh, risk factor for heart. Cholesterol is a threefold risk factor for heart. But death from heart disease is thousand times higher when we age. This is the major risk factor for heart. And aging is the major risk factor for Alzheimer, diabetes, and, and cancer. And the point here is that aging, or the biology of aging, is drive those diseases. So we need to stop the aging part in order to prevent all those diseases. What's happening now is terrible. Because if you look at accumulation of three diseases, okay, we're talking about multiple diseases, and this graph shows accumulation of three diseases in men and women on the left. It's not much when we're young, and after age of 60, it takes off. It goes from zero to 230. So people have three diseases. Each disease might be terrible. Each disease has a treatment that has side effects. And then you have three treatments that all are interacting with each other. We cannot go on and live like that. And there is a clear alternative for that. What we need to do is start targeting aging so that we can actually drop down this accelerated rate of getting a disease. How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, the question is, Is it worthwhile doing that? Is there an example that will make you think that maybe it's worthwhile doing? Here is the Kahn family, because the Kahn family is the poster child of one of my studies, that is studies on centenarians. And you see the Kahn sibling, they are all born between 1910 and 1920 to two uh, parents. And what's unique about them is each one of them got to be older than 102. Helen, who's sitting in the left, that died at age 110, I met her when she was 100 years old. In fact, she opened the door uh, to me, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and I'm looking at her, and I'm saying, excuse me, none of your doctor told you to stop smoking? And she looks back at me and says, you know, all four doctors that told me to stop smoking, they died. <laughs> And I think she's making a very important point. Point one is, if you smoke for 90 years, you can live for a long life. Okay, but, but really, the point here is that those guys were resistance or, uh, or were resilience to some of the insults that we know will kill each one of, it, or, or, of us. And by the way, I have more than 700 centenarians, and half of them are overweight or obese, Half of them are smokers, less than half do exercise like even walking or bicycling. Only 2% are vegetarian. 
They got to this age in, in, in spite of the environment, and I'm certainly not telling each, every one of you that the secret for longevity is to be obese and smoke and, and anything like that. As I said, I have over 700 uh, centenarians. We actually have 3,000 people because we have the offspring of centenarians too, and we learn really a lot about them. In fact, we found longevity genes that have been translated into treatment by major pharmaceuticals. So this is a really good avenue of understanding them. But I'll ask you, do you, do you want your family to be a family like that? But first I have to convince you something that I found out people do not understand intuitively. The question is, did they get sick when everybody else gets sick, got sick, and now they live 30 years longer, but they are sick? Or did their longevity and health span go together? In other words, did they age slower or did they just happen to survive? This is the answer. So what you see here is a different graph than before. You see on the left side, which is the disease-free side, the one represent all of them are healthy. Now the green line is our control population and the blue line is our centenarian. So let's look at the, at the green line. You see that people are healthy and kind of after the age of 60, they start to have diseases. At age 80, less than 10% uh, don't have any disease. But look at the centenarians. They get disease later on. In fact, they open 20, 30 years of disease-free time. And even after the age of 100, almost 30% of them don't have a disease. They die one day. So their health span and lifespan is going together, is going together, and that's why when you talk to the Khan family where are 100 years old, they're all having fun because they are healthy. Okay, so they can do anything if you are healthy. But this is, for me, not the major discovery. The major discovery here is not only they live longer, but they are sick for very little time at the end of their lives. We call it contraction of morbidity. So if all of us are sick five years at the end of their life, they are sick less than five months at the, 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 the end of their lives. It's interesting that it's not only in my study, the CDC, the Central Disease Control, is doing lots of interesting calculation. In this case, they were looking at the medical cost in the last two years of life of somebody who dies after 100 or at age 70. So to die at age 100 is third the cost of somebody who dies when they are 70. This led to this calculation of what happened if we have increased health spin and contraction of morbidity. It's a seven trillion save for the economy. We called it longevity dividend. And this is actually the point that we're trying, and I'm going all over the world to teach, to really tell politicians that we cannot afford not to do it when we are increasing health spin by decreasing all diseases, not only one, we are doing a major save for the economy. So how do we do it? What knowledge do we have uh, where we can start making progress? We created this whole field that's called geroscience. It's kind of interesting that the science on old people is really new. What we've achieved in geroscience, we have identified hallmarks of aging that can be targets for therapy. There are eight hallmarks of aging that we found, and actually each one of those hallmarks has a target that a biotech company is trying to develop drugs to. But the most important thing about those hallmarks are they are interactive. So for example, in the bottom you see proteostasis. So our cells are failing to do garbage disposing we start accumulating lots of garbage. We can correct this by genetic manipulation. We can also correct it now with a drug. And when we do that, it's not only that we, self, we, we solve proteostasis, but this affects the metabolic uh, dysregulation that we have with aging, inflammation, mitochondrial uh, problem. So it affects other parts of the hallmarks. And I have many more examples like that. I think each one of the hallmarks can be a TED talk on, on its own. How did we get there? Well, we did something kind of clever. Instead of just understanding the aging that sounds so, so complex, 
we created and found by accident or by design models that live longer. By looking at models that live longer, we understood some of what's going on in aging, even if we didn't understand the whole of aging. And we started creating a whole industry of science and biotechs that will target those. And I will summarize what we achieved in those two sentences. First of all, healthy, health span and lifespan. And, and health span is really my goal. I have to tell you, in this advertisement for a drug that delay aging, I would put the lifespan as a side effect, okay? Yeah, you know, you can, live, you can live without disease and stuff like that, but I'm sorry you might live longer. I don't know if you're ready for that. I don't know if your economy will allow that. But this is a side effect. But the point is, health span has been extended in numerous models. And it was done by uh, manipulation with the environment and with drugs and with genetic ways. Not only that, and that's the second point, some of those drugs are in humans' use, except they're not purpose for targeting aging. So how do we make a, a progress? What are the challenges in order to build, to bring these discoveries and start getting to delay aging right now? This is our problem. If you have hypertension or if we want to treat diabetes, so if we want to treat any one of the other diseases, there's biological discoveries and biotechs are formed. Maybe the pharmaceuticals are then charging too much money, but there's a drug that's being developed and eventually will get cheaper. Okay, and that's how we do it all the time. We have a major problem that FDA doesn't recognize aging as a prevented disease, or as we say, doesn't have an indication. If aging is not recognized as a preventable disease, two things are going to happen. First of all, the healthcare providers don't have to pay the customers. They should if they do the economy, but they don't have to. But more important, the pharmaceuticals are not going to jump in where you don't have an economical plan. So one of our obstacles now is to actually get the FDA to approve aging as a preventable condition. How are we doing it? Well, we're a bunch of scientists that created this study that's called TAME. TAME stands for Targeting Aging with Metformin. Metformin is a common drug to treat type 2 diabetes, and it's a generic and cheap drug. In fact, metformin is the cheapest drug in the formula in the United States. Still 10 times <laughs> more expensive than in Canada, but it's really cheap. Why metformin? Well, when you give metformin to a variety of animals, they will live longer and healthier. And there's a lot of biology. In fact, metformin hits most of the hallmarks of aging, whether it's primary or secondary. But also, there are lots of clinical studies that show that metformin prevents type 2 diabetes, it prevents heart disease in diabetics, it's associated with less cancers in diabetes, it delays cognitive decline in Alzheimer patient or MCI patient, it even has lower mortality. People on metformin with diabetes die significantly less than people without diabetes. Even if they have diabetes and they're more obese and they have more disease to start with, metformin prevents this mortality. So there's a lot of data, clinical data, to support that metformin is a drug that we can repurpose for aging. So what we're trying to do is two things. Use metformin as a tool, and I'm saying it like that, because it's a tool in order to show that aging can be targeted. Even more important, use it so the FDA will have an indication to delay aging. And we've talked with the FDA, and we have a way to proceed. We hope to start the trial very soon. Let me make two closing remarks. It has to do a little bit about the future also. If aliens were landing in Boston, who here has pets? Raise your hands. Yeah, I thought the people who, uh, who had pets left already or didn't come. <coughs> But more than half here have pets. So I think if aliens will come to Boston, and I have friends who have uh, dogs in Boston, the first thing that they will try to figure out is who's running this world, the dog or the man, right? Because the dogs are pulling the, 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 the man who's 
scooping the poops, you know, it'll, it'll take, us, take them 24 hours. But I think more important, they will look around and say, you didn't take care of aging? What's the matter with you? You didn't stop aging because remember, those people who come here came from farther than Mars. <laughs> they already discovered what to do with it because if we go to Mars and we don't have something that really targets the process of aging, we'll get cancer or heart disease by the time we're there and we're never going to come back. So we need this for this reason. But that's not the only reason we need those drugs now. In this hospital, there are people who are surviving cancer that got immune therapy, chemotherapy. Those drugs are aging those people. Those kids after cancer are aging rapidly, and everybody after severe chemotherapy and radiotherapy is aging rapidly. We need to help them. People with HIV get diseases 10 years before they should, according to age. Disabled people who cannot move and then they eat more, so they create other problems that accelerates aging. Or poor people that, for a variety of reasons, cannot get into medical. As I said, metformin is a really cheap drug to give to people to prevent all those diseases that are risky when you're poor. So we are not talking only about how to make your family, you help your family, but we're talking about other needs that when you target aging are very important. And I do want to make another point. It will sound more futuristic than it is, and I'm not talking about science fiction in anything that I said so far. But think of it this way. You can take a sperm of a 70-year-old man and fertilize the egg of a 50-year-old woman, and the baby will be formed of what we see is this blastocyte that is being formed and dividing. And guess what? Those cells do not remember the age of the parents. They erase everything and start at zero. We already, in this situation, created this erasing of aging. And this idea of doing it is already happening in the labs. So the future is about really improving the delaying aging to the extent that will be healthy, that we won't have to take care of our parents, but our parents will take care of us and our children. There is no science fiction here. This is science now. It's accelerating very rapidly, and I really hope that your aging will be real, real fun. Thank you.